Thank sure. you everyone for coming in and I'm very happy to welcome uh, Srijit Mukherjee and Rajdeep Ghosh and Shankodeep Chakraborty. Uh, Srijit is, is going to Penn State. He's a faculty at Chinta and a director at Chinta as well. Srijit did his BSc and BMAT from ISI Calcutta. Rajdeep is with us. Rajdeep is also a faculty at Chinta. He is presently in CMI, Chennai Mathematical Institute. So he'll be able to tell a lot about that. And he's also, uh, he's also very popular. Both Srijit and Rajdeep are very popular among students. And that's great. And Shankodeep is also here with us. Shankodeep has a fascinating story. He, he may, you may have seen Shankodeep in the episodes of Math Adda in the Chinta YouTube channel. He did his uh, bachelor's in CMI, then did his PhD in Brazil. And right now he is in China for a postdoctoral program. So that's awesome. So today we are here to discuss some of the pathways toward these contests like the ISI entrance or CMI entrances for the next year. And of course, this, this comments will be in general, so you can also benefit from that. The first half of the discussion will be more of us speaking. And then in the second half, you can also ask questions. And in between, when someone is speaking, you can also ask questions. Yeah. Hello, guys. Hi. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, can you, I mean, maybe you can start a little bit about your, like, what the teaching, uh, learning strategies should be and some of the things that you would like to share because you have taught as well at Chinta for so long. So, uh, so yeah, so um, I have enjoyed a lot of time teaching the mathematics portion, like, uh, and the ISI, CMI entrances. Um, so one of the fundamental thing um, I personally feel that having an Olympiad exposure before ISI or CMI helps, but it's not necessary um, because it's all about uh, having a specific, uh, I mean, this is what I feel, there may be you know, other views about it. Um, it helps in the mindset of that same, it, it, it's, uh, it's a thinking style, okay? Right. So, uh, for the preparation purpose, I feel that if you want to self-prepare, um, the best part is to read books. Right. So I will start with some books that I think, but um, do you have some specific questions, Ashini? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a very good point, actually, uh, Srijit. I just want to sh stress that as well, what Srijit said. It's very much possible to prepare by yourself. You don't have to go to some coaching center, yeah. not even to Chinta. You have, you can just do it by yourself. And I think, personally, I am a very lonely learner. I, I, I you, 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 give, you give me some books, you give me some problems, and I'll just work on them. Okay. But some people learn better at uh, an ambience of other people working together. That's also there. That's also fine. So, Sri, can you point out some books, like the baseline books that you can? Start. Uh, so may I know the audience over here? Like they are all eleventh or people, or they are like from. Well, this uh, is designed for the kids in eleventh, twelfth. So uh, if someone else is as, uh, is also uh, uh, joining in, that's fine. But we will assume that the kids are in eleventh and twelfth because that was the invited audience. Yes. Okay. So assuming that the people are already in eleventh, twelfth, I'm assuming that uh, they have they have like quite a bit of. Uh, mathematical exposure uh, till class 10. So assuming that, um, so if we, if we dissect the preparation plan, uh, the preparation syllabus actually, you will see we have uh, two core parts. One is the Olympiad part, the Olympiad syllabus, but I know non-Olympiad that is a calculus portion. So for the Olympiad, they are um, uh, according like how we have designed the courses, like in the same thought procedure, uh, there is combinatorics, there is number theory, there is algebra, fundamentally, and it, and geometry. I'm sorry, that's the favorite part I'm missing. So the so number theory, combinatorics, algebra, and geometry. So I will tell, uh, I will share one of my favorite books from there. I also think others should share to Rajdeep yeah. Chakradev and Yeah, I'll go to Rajdeep next year. And then uh, the calculus portion. So five topics are there. Um, so. There are kind of there are kind of two approaches to a uh, learning. One is 
uh, learning the theory and then go to the problems and there is another approach that our uh, ashanita really uh, you know uh, showed me the path while i started in chile is like from problem to the theory so that kind of really i'm fond of it really now um so for the learning the theory purpose i think um pre college mathematics is a very good way to start okay so i uh, i, I challenge you to the pre college mathematics ah, can, you, right. can you just share this um, screen uh, and show the book maybe on yeah. amazon or yeah i can i can do that yeah, yeah sure you can so you want me to share the uh, book title with the kids yeah 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 uh, okay i'll do that so pre college mathematics that's like a, if you're beginning the journey of yourself that's a pre college mathematics i think uh, that is a good way to start and then comes if you want to advance stuff do the advanced thing there are specific uh, books for that um i think for preparation purpose if you have three books pre college mathematics there yeah, this one excursion in mathematics and for calculus portion if you have the um i am around one variable calculus uh that's uh, very sufficient i believe yeah that's what i did personally for my preparation but i also want to hear what rajdeep shankadev and ashnida has to say because they are kind of yeah, yeah let's hear from rajdeep actually rajdeep what do you think rajdeep by the way let me introduce one more time he is in uh, cmi right now and are you in chennai right now rajdeep at this moment yeah, of yeah. time oh okay, okay. Yeah, I'm in I'm in the campus right now. Oh, oh, you're in the campus right now. Okay, that's awesome. So tell us a little bit about the books that you would recommend and other ideas that you may have. Right. So, uh, I mean, from what I understand, the target audience here is uh, ISI CMA actually. So in that case, I think in general, depending on, like, it really matters where you're starting. For me, uh, I I had uh, like I. I had somewhat of an advantage because I had a, uh, like a, a semi-complete, semi at least, least um, uh, Olympiad experience. So because of that, uh, I didn't have to worry too much about the say commutatorics or geometry parts of the course. Um, for the calculus part, I suppose that um, Imran is a pretty solid book. That's that's that definitely there. Uh, it definitely like sets in a lot of the. Uh, content, but on a personal level, I realize that books like Maron. So, for example, from, from a very practical point of view, Maron is a great book, and you know it helps you clear exams and all that, and it's really good. On the other hand, uh, I have personally, like for me, the joy of math has always been the number one priority, and that clearing exams and all will always be there, and you know, it, and I suppose that it gets hard to. Sort of balance school work and then also do math on the side, but uh, Maron the content of Maron usually lines up with the ten plus two syllabus. So you should usually set aside maybe one or two hours a week, maybe more, maybe less, but at least uh, we should assert like some amount of time to reading like so maybe slightly harder books, but also books that sort of inculcate a, a spirit of mathematics for that for, the, for that. Uh, so for that, I'd say something like something a book that uh, I really wanted. Like I, in hindsight, I should have started with that. I started with some other books, but uh, Mathematical Circles by Foreman is a really good book, uh, and it it's got a beautiful collection. Problem in general, Russian problems tend to be really well, really well structured, and they're usually very fun to do. So Foreman's Mathematical Circles is a book I'd recommend to anyone who's sort of not done Olympiads or is. Uh, and you know is getting into ICICMI stuff. Just do it for the fun of it. For the calculus portion, I'd say maybe reading something like uh, Abbott, Understanding Analysis by Abbott. It's uh, a beautiful book. It's a beautiful book. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it's a very it's a and the thing is that I've read very like so at a ten plus two level, it sort of lines up with what is sort of the CMI's Anna one course analysis one, real analysis one, and so that it lines up somewhat with it but it's exceptionally well written and for a beginner it's a very very good book because i feel like in the whole jargon of you know differentials and limits and all that we sort of lose meaning of what what is the name is. of it i have never i've never i've never seen ever worked with this book this is called abbott is that a no no, no abbott is an abbott. understanding analysis yeah understanding analysis oh oh okay i speak an abbott 
Oh, Rajdeep, yeah. I really like that part. I mean, for the students, where you know, it introduces the idea of where rational numbers are rational numbers fit together, and the idea of action of completeness. Okay, wow. like my real number line is that's the like it's written in a very kids way. So it's like I yes. really loved it. Okay, right, so yeah, right. thank okay. you, Rajdeep, for mentioning that. Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. Let let me just go to Shankar Deep once. Thank you, Rajdeep, for that input. I'll just go to Shankar Deep, but before I'm going there. I'm going I'm, before I go to him let me just mention briefly that uh if you see go to Vichinta's YouTube channel I must mention this uh, Rajdeep the first video that Rajdeep actually sent us he now teaches as well really struck me and then of course Srijit's videos or Shankardeep's videos have the similar flavor the key idea that Rajdeep mentioned is the joy of doing mathematics right the entrance the exams of course will come and go and recently shankardeep also posted a video the uh, next episode of math adda uh, it's a, it's a beautiful video i mean you can also look into it making new spaces so but let me not get carried away uh, let me go to shankardeep once and uh, talk to him about his ideas about books that they can use for these entrances oh now i cannot hear you so please excuse uh, the audio error shankardeep is probably is 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 it audible like is shankardeep audible guys i i cannot hear him i cannot hear him actually maybe shankardeep you can log in one more time yeah maybe that's possible okay so please excuse shankardeep he is now in uh, china uh, uh Traveling from CMI to Brazil, IMPA, then to China right now. So, Ashika, so that's what. What did you like? What's your um, suggestion to the students out here? Oh, I think the books that you guys mentioned is totally fantastic. Uh, one thing I would say about calculus, uh, I have my personal favorite to start with, is the calculus by Tarasov. Uh, I have to told you, I think, numerous times about this book. and i really love it because of the conceptual clarity that you obtain from the discourse look the thing is this that in the introduction of that book tarasov actually says something about his world view like he sees mathematics and literature in the same light at least in the younger days he did and he sort of brings that thing into his calculus uh, this uh, exposition especially the part on limit is absolutely exquisite uh, limit and continuity so if if you if kids can get hold of that book that's totally great uh, but i'll go to shankardeep again let's try if his audio if is working hello yeah it's working now great right. yes okay okay <laughs> so uh, the question that was asked asked me asked of yeah. me was a recommendation for books i i mean anything that you would like to talk but yeah that that too again you're mute unmute yeah yeah uh i would like to talk about something else because i think you already have a lot of good uh, recommendations for books okay so uh you as oshini was telling you that you do not need a teacher to pass these exams you can just get some get some problems you can solve them on your own and you can crack the exams what why do you need a teacher it's because a teacher can teach you how to think yeah and that you have, yeah a might you might have noticed that the problems that are uh, that appear in olympiads or or isi cmi are somewhat different from the problems that you encounter in schools or other exams right they are not just hard they're qualitatively different like you you see you you feel that they are different but you cannot really cannot really express why they are different okay and i am i want to tell you why they are different you okay. see there is uh in my career i have seen two types of mathematics one is the one in school which is basically about uh learning to apply mathematics you are given a bunch of tools 
and you're told how to apply these tools in real life. And if you study mathematics, you are going to study mathematics itself. You are going to you won't care too much about application. You you're going to ask what is a set, what is a number, what is an integration, what does it really mean? Okay. And the kind of mathematics you see in ISSMI or Olympiads, mostly ISSMI, is somewhat in between. In that kind of mathematics, you are starting to ask questions, but as you are not at the level of understanding uh, all the answers. You won't get on the, all the answers. You are just learning to start to question, and that is important. Okay. For example, uh, there is a there is a process for finding square roots of arbitrary numbers that is taught in schools. It's quite complicated. Everyone learns that process. Nobody asks, "Hey, why should this work?" This right. seems weird. Why should, why does such a process work? So right. at this stage, at this stage, you should start wondering about everything you see. That doesn't mean that you're going to get all the answers because some on, some of the answers are quite difficult and you will have to wait for them. But try to have a clear understanding of what you know and what you do not know. Okay, this is the kind of questioning that will lead you to the right path in uh, in these problems right i think that's that's a fantastic point i i this is i think srijit or rajdeep or shankadeep all of them will agree that it's also a matter of mindset right it's it's really a matter of mindset what when you see a problem or when you see mathematics itself what are you thinking inside your mind like are you in a rush to go to the end point or are you enjoying the journey as well so that's there is there is a very big difference in mindset and one more thing i would like to stress as shankodit mentioned teachers are important i and that teacher could be a fellow student as well like your friend who is also thinking about uh, anyone who is passionate about the subject, who is thinking about this sort of problems and who is interested to sit together and work with you on those problems, you know, uh, I, I, I am I'm, I'm really fortunate enough to have such friends, uh, some of such friends uh, along the way, uh, though I personally am a solo learner in some sense, but uh, some but but many a times I, I am in need of uh, another person who will just bounce back the ideas with me uh, that's that's very critical and one thing i would i'll go to srijit once quickly but before going there i would just want to point out one thing that srijit said that about the problem to concept strategy the one that we now employ and some people do not like it that much <laughs> but that's that's all right uh, you don't have to like everything you see but uh, for me, at least personally, I found this strategy very, very effective. Uh, I have recently talked about it in a video, in a book review. There is a book by Krishnamurti called Combinatorics Theory and Applications. It's a black book with a red lettering in the cover. And the way that book begins is it starts with a set of forerunner problems. So even before you get into the chapter, even before you get into the chapter, Krishnamurti wants you to think about some problems with whatever you know already. With whatever you know already. And then I, I it was it's really hard. I mean, first you spend days on those problems. So I did that. I was playing the game with the author, whatever author is asking me to do. So I tried to solve the forerunner problems. And then when I entered the chapter, all the theorems and all the example problems were just cases of those forerunner problems. You know? So when I entered the chapter, I, I was really awestruck that I knew everything that was inside the chapter because I have already internalized them while solving the forerunner problems. You know, that's, that's, that was a really magical experience for me. In fact, that happened with me, with my father as well. I'll just briefly share a minute 
with that uh, experience because I think that's a very important thing from the mindset perspective that both Shrijit and Shankodi were pointing out. Uh, so I, my father gave me a geometry problem. I was in class five at that point of time. We are traveling in Koshani in Himalayas. And I was struggling for at least more than a week, I think. It was a really simple problem. Now I think about it, I see that was, it was not complicated. But I was uninitiated at that time. So I was thinking about the problem and I was begging for some hints. But my father, who is also a computer scientist, a published computer scientist, he knew the game. So he said that uh, no hints from me at least. So after a week or more than a week, I think 10 days, I remember in the Gandhi Ashram in Koshani, I, would, I was able to finally unlock the problem in my mind. And the joy was absolutely stunning, you know, the thing that I felt at that point. So that's the kind of mindset. Don't ask for hints too quickly. Struggle with the problem. It's not going to be easy. That's the fun part, right? Srijit, please go ahead. You have to, yeah, you can add whatever you want to add. I think you, you have something to say. Yeah. Uh, so coming to this uh, joy of uh, struggling, I should yeah. call it by. I have a few stories of, uh, I have heard from my seniors in ISI and also mine. Uh, so uh, the first story comes from one of my seniors. He is now a postdoc at the N National University of Singapore. Okay. Uh, in mathematics. Uh, so his name is Ujan Dash Gupta, I think. I may not be sure of the title. So uh, I have learned a bit of mathematics from him, the calculus portions. Bondavatha. Bondavatha. Yeah. Yeah. Ujan right. So, uh, oh, uh, so I have. Uh, so his story was this. So he was struggling with a problem. Um, yes, he was struggling with a problem in mathematics, um, some Olympiad level problem, and then he struggled for one year. And then he could finally solve it. And uh, surprisingly enough, uh, it was the only question that was asked in his BSTAT interview. Whoa. Uh, and uh, I mean, he just answered it like this. So I can feel his joy, like how when he was telling this, the told about the story about his joy of discovering the mathematics, it really struck me at that point. Um, I also want to tell another story of um, my struggle with geometry, and it's still my favorite. So um, I started preparing for Olympiads around in class eight. Okay? So and I was terrible at geometry. I could not do geometry problems of RMO, and in the nine, ten, it was totally terrible. Okay, I couldn't do a single problem. Um, so then, uh, when I got promoted to class eleven. There was a, a friend of mine named Shagnit. He's an IIT. He was an IIT. You know? So he was good at geometry. Okay. So I remember a problem from Holland Knight back. Uh, there wasn't a total algebraic problem, but he did it geometrically, assuming the quadratics to be sides of the, the side length, the median length. Okay. So he did an algebraic problem in a geometric way, and that really fascinated me. So I sat with him. Behind the, uh, we were, you know, backbenchers, the mathematics lovers are usually backbenchers. So uh, we sat in the backbench and I, I just observed him for six months do geometry problems. Okay. Six months. I just observed him how he used to do, attack a geometry problem. And then one fine day I came back, you know, I could do five to six RMO problems at a go. So I feel that, you know, um, this whatever uh, Shankar the told about the teachers, how to think. You can also do it with friends, okay? If you do group study in this online forum, it's really hard. But if you do a group study, uh, uh, you can lo learn a lot from your peers. Some peers are your strengths. So this group studying really helps me. And this was one of the turning points like for my love for geometry. So I also remember Shorodip Das from Chinta. He actually organized such a group study plans, okay? And yeah, Shorodip works on the math circles with the kids from I think Shundarbans and uh, or Purulia, I'm not sure. Yeah, I um, think it's very, it's a very, very good uh, step for him. And he has realized the potential in studying in groups and with a similar mindset of people. Yeah, well, I have should, just a few stories. You should to see share. the reports that Shaurodip makes. They're really yeah, detailed and very nice. Uh, it was really nice. Uh, Rajdeep and uh, Shankadeep and uh, Shrijit, 
uh, it is really great to you know have all of you with uh, uh, so before we, i open the floor to the uh, question and answer session part uh, i just want to add one thing the learning from peers thing uh, the problem solving sessions that we have agenda like this five days a week thing i think that has been really effective uh, Oritro was saying that about it. Oritro is one of our faculty members in the ISI and CMI entrance uh, program. Uh, he is really passionate. So he was telling me that um, the peer learning, this five, we have five days a week problem solving. This peer learning is really, really effective. And you don't have to be part of Chinta to do it. I mean, you can, again, I mean, of course, we want you to be part of Chinta, but uh, even if you are not, you can be do it with your friends, and that can be even more effective, you know. Uh, but uh, thank you, uh, Shankodeep, Srijit, and Rajdeep for joining in. I'll just open the floor to questions. Uh, so, with the raising of hands, um, if you can, okay, I see there are there is one raised hand from Ramesh. Go ahead, Ramesh. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Sir, actually, uh, I had doubt regarding uh, uh, preparation of ISI interview. Like, what are we supposed to do for that? Um, okay, I think Srijit can take the question. Uh, yeah, so I, I will um, tell you what is what I faced in my ISI B-Star interview. Uh, so, I don't know whether you're going for B-Math or B-Star, but I hope it's almost the same. Uh, Rajdeep and Shankar, did you have a CMI interview? At your time? Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. I didn't have seen my interview, and I had a BizTAC interview. Okay. But, but so we can uh, share our yeah. So I think you can. I I have also a collection of these interview problems at Chinta website, so I'll share that. But Srijit, please continue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, I personally think that, so when I entered into the hall, I personally think that one just one minute. Also, the uh, there are mock interviews that could be effective if you are an internal student of Chinta. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yes. go ahead. Uh, so uh, when um, so when, uh, in the interview, they will really ask you questions, fundamental questions. I remember one question asked to me that if you have a discontinuous function, you know, function is discontinuous at one point, uh, let's say one, uh, and you have another function g, um, which is also discontinuous. Uh, but it's not told where. Uh, will the product of these two functions can it be continuous? So this was one of the questions that was asked to me. Okay, can the product of two discontinuous function be continuous? Okay, and um, you think about it. I will not share the answer to you. And uh, this is one of the other questions that was asked to me. And another question was I I really focus. I uh, you know in our I really focus on this very much. I believe one of the most uh, artistic aspect of learning calculus uh, is to learning how to draw the curves by hand just from the function it's called curve tracing okay so i, I really think this is the most beautiful aspect of uh, geometrical aspect of calculus uh, so they asked me the curve tracing problem um, so if you know about you know uh, the, the idea of how to find the maximum the optimum the critical point with a, of a function univariate function you need to check the double derivative. There is a certain test, right? So you can also do it without doing the double derivatives, okay? So there is a method for that just by checking the behavior of f dash. So uh, the focus was on curve tracing. So these two fundamental questions like limit continuity and curve tracing was asked to me. Uh, many people were, uh, were asked commentorics and stuff. So yeah, that was my interview preparation. So I was being a bit more anxious during my interview but they told me to come down and they're pretty helpful so don't worry about that if you love and if you love mathematics and if you are passionate about it i think you will totally enjoy that journey so shankadeep uh, can share his journey right now okay oh, interview okay. uh, i don't know if my interview experience is going to be very useful for uh, people because i was an inmo already and uh, I, I skipped the exam, the written exam. And for in my word is they have a very different kind of interview. Okay. So what happens is they as you I think, okay, I, I don't I'm not making any claims. 
uh, I think that they assume that Inver word is uh, not going to be very strong at the calculus part because calculus is not included in the Olympiads. So they want to check whether we are we are really up to the level whether whether we are able to solve the written uh, problems. I mean the written exam problem. So they basically uh, it's I'm not just just talking about myself. I I talked to my friends as well. They basically asked us problems from the problems from the written exams, and Sorry. it wasn't easy. I I had a friend who is from like from the state from West Bengal who really wanted to study at ISI, but he didn't pass the exam despite being uh, an Inma already. Anyway, I went there, and I thought that if I answer the questions too quickly. They will think that I have pre prepared everything well because <laughs> the, the question paper was public. Okay, uh, so what I did was I took my time, I showed my thought process to them, I showed them that I know what I'm talking about, and I just uh, didn't memorize those things, and they were pleased, and that was it. I yeah yeah I think also actually. I you now realize that mine was mostly calculus because one of the professors actually when there was an uh, the inmo TC that happened okay not the IMO TC inmo TC that happened in ISI so one of the professors told uh, in the hall that I was I cleared RMO so I think that was the reason why I was asked mostly the calculus questions I think uh, that's an extra additional point to Shankadeep uh, yeah Shankadeep statement and. One more thing I, I also heard from my fellow mates that they were asked questions, you know, you should do the question paper really well after coming back also. Uh, they asked questions about how, why you did it and if you did it wrong, how to um, change like the actual question paper, okay, ST and STP. So they asked about the question papers also like how you would have attempted this if you have not attempted that. So that's also one of the points like I want to add. That's all from my part, like regarding the interview. Rajdeep, do you have anything to add there? Um, like I don't think I have anything to add on my ISA perspective as such, because uh, even though I think I was shortlisted for the, um, like I was shortlisted on the basis of the written test, I really didn't appear, appear for the interview because I already got CMI. I was oh, quite I pleased with it. Uh, although, but then I have sort of been. Like I have been part of some interviews for like scholarships and such, and so I have like a very simple input, which is that um, don't try to come off as too intelligent because that just sort of steps up the level of questions that you end up getting. Even if you are ex <laughs> exceptionally sort of confident in your knowledge, uh, if sort of the interviewers keep riding on with the questions, it can get. Sort of like a hard to hard to answer those questions. So, my that's just a like, standard interview advice for academic things that try to be as simple minded as possible, and at least like show that you're very simple minded. That sort of keeps the interview simple as well. So, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah uh, one point to this. Yeah. So, I, uh, I appeared for a KVPI interview. My written exam went well. And then I went to the interview. I was like 16 or something. And they they was reasonably pleased with my interview. And at the end, like an afterthought, they asked me, if you become a mathematician, what do you want to do? I said, I want to solve the Riemann hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, everyone looked at me and they asked, really? Do you know what it says? <laughs> I said yes. <laughs> I think that had a very negative effect, and I didn't get it. <laughs> okay, yeah. don't don't do stupid stuff like this. Yeah, I also remember one of my juniors. Um, uh, so he's junior because he was my age, but he did some uh, shitty thing in the. Um, I mean, some bad. Uh, you know, he did some this non humble thing. So he he, uh, he was asked that what was his favorite. Subject and um, he told analytical number theory. Wow! Uh, so so uh, that kind of really uh, encouraged the professors to, um, you know, choke yeah. him with more uh, difficult questions. So yeah. Uh, 
Okay, okay, that's great. Uh, great to hear the experiences. Let's go to Dharmendra. I think uh, he is also here raising hand. Dharmendra Singh, uh, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yes, sir. My Dharmendra, uh, I am working in library science uh, after BSc in BAIC. Okay. Uh, presently now in YJEC. So okay. I want to ask this question. Sir, my BSc ke baad mera education mein kaafi gap ho gaya hai. और मैं आई आई एग्जाम भी लिखा था और 2009 या 10 में टिपर का एग्जाम भी पास किया था सर लेकिन इंटरव्यू में मैं रह गया था तो फिर फाइनेंशियल प्रॉब्लम हुआ पिताजी के डेथ के बाद तो मैं ज्वाइन किया ये सर्विस तो अभी मैं आईएमओ वगैरह का भी जो प्रॉब्लम होता है जो इनमो प्रॉब्लम वगैरह तो एक सर हैं तो वो गाइड करते रहते हैं तो मैं ये पूछना चाहता हूं सर दोबारा अगर बीएससी CMI वगैरह से और ISI से किया जाए तो अच्छा रहेगा क्या? क्योंकि मेरा जो कॉलेज था तो वहाँ के बल्लम ट्यूशन पढ़के मैथमेटिक्स किए थे कॉलेज में कुछ भी नहीं हुआ था और फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री सेल्फ स्टडी से किए थे सर और नोट वगैरह जो दरबंदर I just wanted to say something before I I mean I'm sure others can pitch in as well लेकिन अगर तुमको मैथमेटिक्स अच्छा लगता है और तुम्हार तो दुबारा बीएससी करने का या बीस्टार्ट बीमार्ट करने का कोई मतलब ज़्यादा मीनिंग नहीं है इससे बहुत ज़्यादा अच्छा होगा अगर तुम टीआईएफआर या नेक्स्ट लेवल का जो मैथमेटिक्स का जो स्कूल्स हैं आईएसआई में भी तो एमएमएट का किया जा सकता है सीएमआई में भी मास्टर्स किया जा सकता है मे बी यू कैन � तो तुम्हारा जो मतलब क्या है कि एक ही चीज बार-बार करने से जिंदगी का भी टाइम गुजर जाता है है ना और तुमको मैथमेट तुम आईएमओ का भी प्रॉब्लम बना रहे हो यही तो बोल रहे हो तुम तो इसका मतलब है कि तुम मैथमेटिक्स के साथ तुम्हारा रिश्ता काफी मजबूत है तो अगर ऐसा है तो क्यों ना तुम रिसर्च मैथ तो आगे जाके तुम और भी अच्छा जगह पे पीएचडी भी कर सकते हो या कोई पोस्टडॉक का काम भी काम भी कर सकते हो रिसर्चर के तौर पे भी काम कर सकते हो। I think that will be a much better plan for you. I don't know if anyone else has something to add. शंकुदी पर राजदी पर। Yes, I wanted to say something. Yeah. In I studied in CMI. And I also used to attend classes at the IMSC, which is another institute, which is uh, also also in Chennai. And I saw many people who are not even from mathematics background, mostly engineers who wanted to do mathematics at doctorate level. So they used to attend some classes with us. Then they started doing some kind of a reading project with some professor. And they went directly to PhD and they did it well. Many people, they are not like, you might think, hey, they're geniuses, not like that. Normal people and many of them, I've seen them doing this. It's, I think it's more economical with your time because a BSc being a formal course, you, uh, awarding a degree has a lot of bureaucracies. Okay. So uh, you can do, you can learn what you need in much less time if you want doing reading courses and attending some classes with uh, students. So right. you can take this route. You, you just, uh, the, the problem is in this case, you will have to, you will have to find a professor willing to take you in. If you can do that, then you're set. Right. Yes, sir, yes, sir. sir uh, I am attending also conferences, uh, which are uh, online and uh, which are related to physics also. Uh, I attended many conferences in uh, Mumbai also, and uh, uh, abhi, sir, FC, oh, sorry, linear algebra mein canonical form wala bhi five day workshop tha ek, to wo bhi attend kiya tha, to usse bhi kafi learn karne ko mila. To main kabi IIT ka bhi tayari nahi kiya sir, us time pe na to IMO, INMO vagera ka malum tha. To I am, matlab I want to strong my basic also. So I am preparing for uh, these exam also, but I cannot give. Okay, okay, I understand. Okay, thank you for that question, Dharmendra. Let me go to uh, Gugan once. Uh, Gugan, can you unmute yourself? I can take a couple of more questions before we end this session. 
but uh, we will be very happy to take other questions by email as well gugan can you ask a ask your question by unmuting yourself or maybe gugan is unable to unmute let me go to An anjan anjana Maha mahajan sorry if i'm spelling the sir oh gugan is here okay Sir, sorry, sir, network issue, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, I am studying sixth, sir. You are studying in sixth grade. Okay, welcome. Sir, uh, I, uh, from sixth, how many exams are there, sir? Uh, interesting, <laughs> like science based, max based, that like any exams okay. are there, sir? Yes, of course, Kugan. Why don't I do one thing? Uh, I'll just send you a list of uh see look there are many 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 exams out there right but we don't think that all of them are of any use not all of them are really good some of them are really good some of them are useful for your academic career okay now we have a list of those exams and we help our kids to you know figure out which ones to choose uh so uh, I, we will help you with a list of that okay Okay. definitely but at the sir. moment you should focus on two exams which are really okay. good one is amc8 american math competition 8 and the other one is nmtc gauss nmtc okay. gauss okay now okay, just sir. these two there are other fake olympiads like sof olympiad or i don't know sasmo or all those stupid things don't do those things because those are just names everyone is running after them but those will have no value in the long run. Right? Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, Good question. Uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you said no, sir, uh, before that uh, 400, before it will be 400 questions on back, the theory will be there, no, sir. First of all, you said no, sir. Yeah, start with the problems that I said. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Can you uh, post the link in the chat box, sir, of the uh, book, sir? Oh, of the books, right? yeah, 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 of course, I can do that. Yes, uh, all right, thank you, Google. Let me go to Abhi Dipta, I think, is that right? Or or maybe Anjay, Anjay Mahajan, go ahead. Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning, sir. Sir, uh, like I was a very bad student till eighth, and from ninth onwards, I started studying. So basically, maths was the only subject that I started to take a liking to. And sir, I am very curious about the things. So I can questions like, I have questions like how this works and that works. But sir, basically, uh, I am studying for the CBSC. So I don't get the answers to the questions that are very high from the topics that, that were there. So I don't have the basics, like proper theory. So sir, how should I start the preparation for CMI? Well, the books that uh, Shankodeep or Srijit or Rajdeep pointed out, those will be a very good starting point. And uh, one thing I would add, Anjay, is that uh, it's great that we are asking questions about fundamental mathematical ideas. Uh, but to really ask great questions and also to process the answers, or the answers that are available out there or to imagine something ourselves one key factor is to do a lot of good problems that would give you the license to ask better questions in some sense okay if you uh, if you are ever in doubt that okay i have this question i have that question my general idea is go to challenges and thrills of pre-college mathematics do some let's say two problems or three problems uh, uh, from the geometry section at least get a license to ask another good question and then because sometimes we get lost we ask questions which are fairly complicated but then we are unable to pursue their answers because there are so many resources out there in the internet, right? We can always Google it. We can always find a YouTube video. But in most cases, it would be a waste of your time. It would be an overflow of information. Uh, so I would, in general, for kids of, uh, who are starting out, the main suggestion is, 
do at least five good problems every day and then think about complex uh, fundamental questions uh, which are uh, more more theoretical in nature because your mind will be ready it will be fertile to handle so those more complicated ideas when you do that so go to the books like challenges central of pre college mathematics excursion in mathematics marin or i would also say piskunov or tarasov those are good books uh, piskunov especially has an excellent part on locus problems so you can try those as well problems problems at the bread and butter and yeah, uh, i would like to remind you something that i have already said before if you are at this stage if you can be clear about what you know and what you do not know that's enough ah uh, Okay, some question. people don't even understand what they know, what they do not know. They they think they understand things that they do not understand. Don't don't be like that. Okay, so have a clear division in your mind, and at this stage, that's fine. That that's enough. That's that's great. Yeah, yeah, of, of course. Okay. Thank uh, you, sir. Thank um, you. I, I yeah. would just like to add a little. Thing. Yeah, Rajdeep, go ahead. I was just something I realized, and like in hindsight. Should have realized like a lot earlier, and I realized this because uh, Shankarip sir said something. It's because uh, I think a um, big mistake people make when starting out, and I think this is not going to be an issue for people who are doing ICC makers. Um, you know, like your focus of on, like you think you things you want to do are actually quite streamlined. You kind of uh, have like okay, I need to do this, 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 and that's fine. But for me, when I was starting all of this, I made the mistake of sort of thinking that if you know a lot of results. and a lot of theorems somehow that's going to help you do like a lot of good math and that's like if you know i used to, it's it's like it goes to so a ridiculous extent like i think there's results called uh, kobayashi theorem and zygmondy theorem which really have no bearing on math algebra so like one of one of my very good friends that's in my rohan goy who's uh, and i'm a bronze medalist and apm a gold and he's like a, just overall a very brilliant mathematician um he sort of and this is something i realize even like myself now and something he stresses a lot is that just have your basics clear just know through and through the most basic results what is the division lemma what it represents what it means and the simplest things what is severs theorem what is even is how to visualize geometry problems and how to think of number theory how to think of combinatorics how to just count properly simple things but the thing is that olympiad problems and you know as a Sort of sub case of that, I say same problem. Just require you to think at a very basic human level. You don't need to know any results, any like substantial results. You just need to be clear with the basics, and that's something I I'd say. Don't go chasing results. It's a it's a it'll lead you to weird places and you'll end up with it. So yeah, that's very it. nicely put. Actually, <laughs> very nice. In the in the blind alleyways of results, you can get lost. Okay, so let me go to uh, Abhinanda. I think Abhi Abhi Dipta. Sorry, Abhi Dipta. Yeah, uh, morning, morning, sir. Actually, I'm a guardian, so I'm allowed to ask question. Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Okay, I'm a guardian of uh, two two of my kids. So they are in Chinta. Abhinanda and Sai and Abhi Dipta Sai both. Okay. So Abhinanda is on class twelve. So my basic question from you is two question I have. First one is the uh, what is the guideline that I'll fill the form as B stat or B math? That is number one question. What should be my if I go for ISI? Second is that the rating we are getting from Chinta. Uh, what will be my understanding as guardian? Three out of five, four out of five, and four point out of five or something. So these are the two question I'm actually I want to hear from you. Okay. So for the look the the. the fine print is this that uh, i think shankardeep or rajdeep can also comment but over the years what i have found is people who are a bit more abstraction oriented they tend to go for the b math option but people who are interested in more applied materials uh, it's really it really depends on the taste of the student that if you are more focused on application oriented scientific activities then you can take up the beast choose the beast at option uh, the 
but i think others can comment as well and of course if you do be math you can also pivot toward application oriented business many people do that all the time um one of our uh, teachers uh, very highly rated teachers kaurav mukaji actually did a bmath and then pivoted toward finance finances i think mathematical finance so that's one thing the second thing is um, uh, about the rating question so basically if it is something below 3 it would be uh, you would ask for some additional help uh, uh, and if it is 3 or above then that is that is fine because over the time it can it will improve because many layers of understanding will get into that uh, 3 or above is good because at, at any rate the the evaluation is a bit stringent you're talking about the one-on-one -on -one evaluation reports right the the the, the uh, yes, yes, yes. okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so if you see anything below three uh certainly reach out, reach reach out for the for more help but if you see something three or above then it's fine they can keep pushing okay uh five is of course fantastic all right so that is that okay uh anything to add to that shankodip or does this yes so i personally think that this question has no easy answer it's a highly personal personal thing and i think i personally can answer this question only after i have a prolonged chat with the students student because this be goes much beyond academics. It's a like much bigger choice. If someone does B math, then presumably that person is going into a life of research, not necessarily as you heard about Kaurak. But the pressure is going to be to do that because everyone is doing that. If someone does B stat, then there will be some pressure to either go to a job or do a PhD, then go to a job, stuff like that. Okay. And there is the question of the place. Especially, yeah. uh, um, yes, yes. So there is a culture shock that m many times adolescents of like barely 18, who are barely 18, they have, can have uh, huge trouble dealing with that. I was brought up in Kolkata and I saw people who chose BMAT or chose CMI. They went there, they left their homes. They were not prepared to help uh, leave their homes and they suffered they suffered they could not prosper some people actually uh, they thought hey i don't want to do b stat but i am going i want to stay close to my parents i want to stay in kolkata they stayed back eventually they discovered a love for statistics and they did well so this is a very complicated question with many facets okay so there is no easy answer to this Okay. Okay. Thank you. I mean, uh, I understand Thanks. there would be more questions, uh, and it's obviously very uh, natural. But I am actually running short of time, so I just take two more, and then I just uh, quickly in one minute intervals. So, read. Uh, let's go to Orgo and uh, Biba and Ritam. Just three more questions. Yes. One line questions and one line answers, maybe. Yeah. Or go, go ahead. Okay, sir. I want to ask that um, if someone do not read in ISI, if someone do not read in CMI, if someone read in or, or general, just general government college and just did some um, general MSc course, um, then what are the prospectors um, of getting placements or getting a um, getting a being a professor or some sort of research like degree? It's so you can attend the next seminar that is coming up for mathematics of opportunities in mathematics okay it's coming up in um in two minutes from now i'll share the link of that if you want you can attend that because that's precisely on that particular topic okay okay sir. so oh sorry not this one <laughs> i'm sorry not this one I, I sent a long long link one second uh, okay, let's go to Biba. Biba, go ahead. Hello, I'm 
am i audible yes you are yeah good morning sir so i wanted to ask that it's like i'm not much of a problem mm-hmm. solver and i like to think about the problem but don't don't always end up solving it so okay what do i do about it i mean i've oh, enjoyed it- my time in math but i don't always end up solving it in a time limit so maybe i don't have a place in disciplinary math after all whatever so yeah i mean uh, see uh, since I, we are in, a, in running short of time i will step in and quickly answer it uh, i generally when students ask me this i tell what i tell myself that is if i am stuck with a problem i try some more if after trying some more i'm still stuck i try even some more and then i get frustrated and i stop trying and then i come back and i try some more okay and this is really a cultural thing you can you keep on doing this you can keep on pushing and that how much you can do it how, for what length of time really it's about the tenacity of the person uh, person you are uh, that's one part of it the second part of it is talk to someone who is a friend or a faculty who will not give you the solution um, who will probably give you a hint who will feel the same sort of uh same sort of pain that you are facing when uh, they are unable to solve a problem okay so these are the two things talk to someone who will not give a solution just a hint and just keep on pushing there is no other easy way of fixing this so uh sorry if i was very quick but let me just end today's session ritam i would answer your question personally okay i am running yeah, short of time i'm really it. sorry Okay take care all of you thank you for attending thank you shankodeep and rajdeep for your time thank you bye all of you take care